What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Plus Cards Podcast show where we bring you the news, video game news, every week, once a week, once a month. I'm Fonz. I'm joined by Gavin Jones. Gavin, how the heck are you? You know, I'm good, but I, I just I just realized something as we were starting. I saw my little my little avatar guy there. Yeah, we might need to we might need to change that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if I I can't pull it up without switching um, screens, yeah. but yeah, that was a good four years. Ago. I think it was even taken from a picture that was earlier. It was, it was yeah, it was four years ago, and I think in the last year, like my hair quickly went to white. Like, <laughs> that's it, I see it more more as blonde. Like I honestly don't think you. that's how yeah. I see it. Yeah, but that's not the comments I get. <laughs> is your beard when you do let it grow? Is it still? Is it's it... it's it's got some like it's getting the old man like hairs coming out sideways i extra see stuff but yeah i get uh i'm getting some gray but just in the beard not really in the hair actually in the hair yeah too yeah <laughs> i'm no different than you yeah the more Hold i think about to it. your color for as long as you can <laughs> yeah 100 percent. yeah Ronnie, how you been i've been good i've been good things are things are good we're mm -hmm. we're uh I, I found an exciting fact about the place we live that will excite you probably a little bit mm. so i decided on. on netflix they have this documentary on uh, uh american gladiator do you remember this when we were kids oh yeah for sure i always wanted to be in that it looks right? so fun well after this you will not because these guys were beating the fuck out of contestants they were like all roid raged out and they're like yeah just and like they only accepted like in their tryouts the people that were just like brutal like one guy took a guy slammed him on the head broke his like skull and he's just like yeah you got the pot whoa so what are they slamming him on because like the floor concrete. Okay, but this was the... just their trial. They're oh. like, we're gonna try you guys out in the parking lot. Um, uh, Meg but... says, Meg, uh, to for you to scoot your mic closer a little bit. Closer? Yeah. Oh God, I thought I was being too loud. Um, but the the very first gladiator, uh, I forget his original name, but later named Gemini. Uh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, he was he was one of the original guys, and he helped pick out all the other gladiators. Let's this up, right? And his like first line in the documentary is like, "Yeah, so I'm originally from this tiny little town called Yakima." No, that's <laughs> like, awesome. Yes. It what makes me hell? so happy. Uh, so although there's and a then the stock footage they show of Yakima is some completely different town. Oh, of course. Which yeah, they're close enough desert or whatever. Yeah. Wait, so there's a doc on Netflix that covers. Yes. Anxiety. Yeah, I forget what it's called. It might be on Hulu, but I'm pretty sure it was on Netflix. It's just called America, the doc? I feel like that's what you it was <laughs> I this forget is America what it was right called. Here. It was like Circus of Chaos or something <laughs> like that. So so anyway, so that little fact, I don't what, something about it has made my week. So that's oh, yeah. that's how I'm doing. I'm I'm doing American Gladiator good. How are you doing, Fonz? That's our claim to fame is that we have one person that was on American Gladiator we, yeah. in 1992. Cooper <laughs> Cup? No, fuck them. Yeah. We got uh gemini <laughs> so god these outfits are so oh yeah the tights the see they had to like the the not phone but they had mats and so when i'm like yeah tell were... me about these tryouts or i'm like well but it's you know safe or quote unquote but it seems like they're doing it in parking lots when they're trying out for the yeah there was like the basically no safety in this like Makes sense. it was it was interesting and i guess a lot of their favorite the, the gladiator's favorite parts is like because most people they just knock them down they wouldn't get back up yeah. But when people wanted to like get in fights with them, I'm like, oh, we got a scrapper. Let's, this is awesome. Let's go. Also, I'm twice your size. Yeah. So there's uh this stuff which uh, like the actual platform thing seems hard to <laughs> to beat one of these gladiators. But mm. there was also I want to say it's like towards the end of the competition where they're shooting stuff at you. Apparently that was at the beginning. Oh, okay. I I that was my favorite part. Yeah. That's all I wanted to just do. Just like trying to dodge it, and they have like the cool plexiglass over the thing. They're just this turret gun that shoots nerf balls or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That hair, man. Yeah, that, I think that was they called him Malibu, and he was just he was about he was a bodybuilder, but he also like wasn't very good at this. They said he couldn't take a hit very well. Okay, so <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I'm about to watch this, Kevin. <laughs> it's it's all right. Oh God, it's so Let me bring it back. It's so ninety or yeah, it was nineties. It right? was nineties. It might have started late eighties. It was it was earlier than I thought. Yeah, I'm sure it ran for a while. Maybe we got, I don't even think we got reruns. I'm sure it was still happening in the early 90s. But mm, I remember yeah. watching this in the morning on like weekends as a kid. Yeah. Just like, this is so dope. And then like our equivalent was sort of like Guts for Nickelodeon, if you remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Not as <laughs> as awesome as this, but yeah, Guts is cool. No, it was more like this mixed with uh, what you call. Uh, There's like Legends of Hidden Temple or. Um, yes, yeah. So what would you do? There was a there's different Nickelodeon competitions. What's the one where like, yeah, you got the families. It was like, what if uh, 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 what's the one with Steve Harvey? 
Oh, Family Feud. Yeah, what a Family Feud, but with boogers and physical challenges. <laughs> yeah. You got a physical challenge. <laughs> Which merge that with Family Feud and have Steve Harvey on that show? Yeah, and that's we'll just gold. bring it back. I th I think people would want that show. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's yeah. a cool. Uh, it's not a doc. It's like a YouTube bit going down the history of Nickelodeon shows when they were filmed. Oh, awesome! And how it was a big deal with that studio they're at was it Universal Studios. That sounds right. And they had a deal where they could shoot there, or for them to shoot there, they had to make sure that there was like stuff that was filmed live. So a lot of the shows they made were because of the fact that they needed a live audience because that was a deal they had with whatever studio. That's smart. That's a Universal smart. Studio, so they would bring in people and be able to see them while, like taping shows and whatnot. Yeah. And a lot of times they had nothing to film, but they had to just like fake something so that like people coming through, because they would pay tickets to go watch right. this. But it was just really cool, and and I love that era of Nickelodeon. It was awesome. Yeah. That was that was the best. Bring it back. I'm going to start training for American, American Gladiator, so <laughs> when it comes back, I'll be ready to go. Or we need to do uh, Are You Afraid in the Dark, but this time by um... – well, Jordan Peele. Oh, damn. <laughs> it's still got to be really terrible, like uh, Canadian production companies, yeah. though, that are also doing like goosebumps at the same time. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. No, I'd be. I'd be and that's a that. funny idea, but also that could actually work like having him, because he does like really adult, you know, scary stuff. Yeah. But having him go like, hey, actually make it with a kid angle. It's like, okay, yeah. like, like, not dumb it down, but like, play with that fear differently i'm sure he would still knock it out of the park yeah. because anything he does is awesome yeah or do uh like uh kind of like have it be for adults but like it's making fun of these like horror styles while still being a really good example sure. of said thing yep while i eat my mcdonald's adult meal or whatever the <laughs> thing is called yeah there was a they brought back goosebumps we watched that not too long ago oh the movie yeah i think we're, we're telling you about it but it's like a with, series with uh, justin long jordan yeah long. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's dope. It was good? Yeah. It looked a little spooky for my taste. And it's a little not. spooky. <laughs> I guarantee you it is not too spooky no? for you. No. You'll be all right, Gavin. Oh. You know what? Another spooky Disney one, though. What, not that spooky, but the new Haunted Mansion wasn't that bad. Yeah, Megan watched it. I think came out on the end, like the tail of it, which it was done. But yeah, she liked it, too. Yeah. It made no... <laughs> I have tend to catch these movies when she's watching them at the end. They make literally no goddamn sense that's probably one of the worst ones to come in at <laughs> yeah. the end so it's like a crystal and oh, what's her face that she's like i think she starts off as just like a severed head or whatever on a table but then she gets a body at some point oh i forgot about that Sig sigourney weaver i think plays it what okay somebody somebody it was someone well famous yeah, i don't yeah. remember it being the weave but it could have been the weave it could have been the weave i think it was <laughs> that's awesome well, what you been up to? What you been playing? What you been watching? Anything crazy? A lot of nothing, man. Um, been playing some stuff. I did try um, Power World. Oh, Pals. that's right. You told me. Yeah. It was what, so? How are your feelings? Uh, it's it's. I think exactly what you'd expect. I knew it wasn't going to be my jam. Okay. Where's my B roll that I had ready to go? Here we go. Um, it's not my jam, but um, you know, it's survival. It's survival. Um. Crafting stuff, you know, you have Pokemon there that are just kind of cute, but you can decide to just beat the shit out of them at any point. Did you eat any of them? I didn't know you. I'm not surprised that you can. I'm assuming you can. I don't have know. You see, have you seen the like butchering them animation? No, I've just like beaten them with sticks. Basically, can, can, you, <laughs> yeah. can you look up Hell World uh, butchering animation? So you can also because Jesus. you can capture humans in uh in your your pal balls or whatever they're called. Right. You can then they become your pals. You can also butcher humans. Whoa. Yeah. So there you go. That's the butchering animation, which is amazing. Oh, he's butchering a human. <laughs> so they're, they're pixelating. Him. Okay. But you nicely just disappear into the yeah. void. Okay. Yeah. So that's terrific. So you didn't, you didn't take part in cannibal, cannibalism. <laughs> no, I didn't even know you could. That is one aspect that I love because this isn't tied. I mean, it's directly influenced by Pokemon, right? Sure. Obviously. I know there's a, like legal stuff. It was a big drama like this whole past two weeks, but it's like definitely gives you Pokemon vibes, but because of that, I guess I assume it has that same kind of uh, family oriented like spin on it, but it doesn't. It's like whatever these creators want to do, there's guns. Mm -hmm. And so when I think of, I didn't even think that you could butcher these Pokemon or eat yourself or eat another Pokemon. Right. Uh, that's wild. And so I do like that that exists, you yeah. know, like we covered this game a while ago where it was maybe like two years ago when they showed the initial trailer. And it's yeah. like, this is bonkers. I'm glad this exists. And then now that it's here, it's like, I'm not going to play it any more than the two hours or whatever I spent, but I'm glad that it's a thing and yeah. that people yeah. are making this. 
and truly bonkers. I, I can't believe. Now, here's the thing. So I don't I typically don't play these survival crafting games. I I assume you haven't played like Ark or anything like that. I've I've dabbled. I've tried it, oh, but have. it never okay. it never lasts. But beyond Minecraft, that's the only kind of So that's what I was going to bring up. Do you now need Pokémon in your Minecraft and also guns? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for Minecraft, I just the heart of it for me is the building and just like the fun of okay. building my house and then looking for resources and then the risk reward of like going into caves and stuff. It's creepy. I like that. And there are, um, animal, you know, NPCs in Minecraft. They've added more over the past 10 years or whatever. Uh, and they're cool, but they're just like, to me, they're just, they just make that world feel more alive right. and not right. like I need to, but you can, like you can make farms, you can use them for stuff. You can ride them now. So I don't need this in my Minecraft, but okay. even this, like the building isn't, I would say as extensive as Minecraft, like where you can dig into the world and, you know, make whatever you want. Right. It seems more Fortnite or like Ark, but, um, it was very janky. So I tried this that first weekend it came out Sure. on Xbox. It was definitely different from PC. So the, at least it was on game pass. So I could uh, swap between the PC and the Xbox version. Right. And it was just like really not optimized on Xbox. Okay. But on PC, it was, you know, it worked great. Um, well, you've also got a tank of a PC over there. Yeah. Luckily now, you know, it's back to the, the over overblown build that I have now. So it ran well and it was, you know, no issues. But it was just weird to see that. This guy is ripped as fuck. He has just this, like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this face, like Nickelodeon cartoon face. And he's just jacked, <laughs> ready to go. Magic Mike over here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's what I would. Yeah, that's hundred percent what I do. I always tend to make um, thick chicks, and I'm and thank the Lord in Power World you can make thick. You can chicks go very. Game. You can go arms clipping through. <laughs> yeah. all on the sides. Yeah, yeah, that's what I give him the salute. I'm like, okay, you know what? I could do that in this game. It's a ten out of ten for me. Yeah, you can choose any color you want, like person, like hair color, like all kinds of stuff. It's up to you. Did you get far enough in to get a gun? No, and it seemed like so. so... Did you even play the game if What's there's a... no guns? That's a thing. The for me early on. The crafting stuff seems so daunting. Like you, you, you can start crafting, making stuff pretty simple, but right. the idea of like extrapolating that for how long it would take to get some kind of gun, I was like, this is not doable yeah. in the weekend that I'm willing to, you know, give it. But um, I'm assuming that you know you can, and maybe it's not as hard as I thought it was. It's a ways in there. Interesting. And then it's like a muzzle a loader too that you literally have to load. Oh, like a musket or something? Yeah. Like okay. <laughs> Gotcha. So you gotta you gotta put some time. But... Did you not give this any thought to play it? Because you have Game Pass, right? Yeah, but it was I, I was busy all weekend, and then I had to do it on my PC, and I, just, I don't know. I just had to free up. We got some people near where I live that want to play Fortnite, and I'm like, all right, I'll download the fucking game, but it's a hundred gigs. Yeah, it's a lot. So a lot. I gotta delete Cyberpunk, which. I'm like, oh, I'm going to play it, but I've been saying I'm going to play the new expansion for I don't know how many months now. So. I think the way you handle memory on your PC is a good analogy for how you live your life, it seems like, because <laughs> you don't, knowing you, you don't... <laughs> I don't know where this is going, Follow but me it's here. correct. It's correct. We're going, to, we're going to go on a trip here. Um, knowing <laughs> you, you don't spend beyond your means. You're very practical. Okay. And so with a PC, you can fucking get another hard drive you and can they're, they're delete stuff priced. you know what i mean but it's always a big task for you in your brain for like i gotta figure this out. i gotta find room but it's like it's really not that bad but it's more of like it's just you as a person you'd like to make sure that you're not like overextending or sure, something sure but i even also with have data, an eight terabyte hard drive well then why are you PC? worrying about it <laughs> i can just load a little slower i don't need my pal world to be loading at whatever but it doesn't matter yeah okay so but you did play some Fortnite. what'd you think uh, I did not. I just I, I didn't Jesus have any Christ. time this weekend. I did. I was playing around a little bit with Unreal Engine though, because I mm. really I, I'm getting like the itch. I just got to get over my burnout to get back into it because oh. it's it's tough. Like it's I feel like it's physically tough for me to code anymore because mm. that burnout was so strong when I got burnt out. Uh, At least with UE five, and I take a different angle where it's like I need whatever kind of game engine, um, a game that lets you create, say like a you know Dreams on PlayStation. Yeah. I like the stuff that's that's uh, graphics heavy, where it's user friendly. You can move stuff physically around and see right. it. And do you think you benefit from something that you can go in and code behind the scenes, or something you can actually see stuff in real time, or a mix of both? Uh, I, I when it comes to creating, I don't think I necessarily benefit or not because now is such a good time if if you want to get into making games and you don't know how to program, or I should say code. Because when you're using those visual, like you've, I assume you've seen Unreal's visual scripting language. Yeah, I dipped I in for a very short amount of time. Forget what it's called, but that is programming. It's not coding, but it is 
programming. Gotcha. And um, so I just, that's not my style. For me, that is way harder to read, um, especially when it becomes uh, spaghetti style. Um, it's way harder to parse, whereas when your code becomes spaghetti code, yeah, it's still hard to read. Explain but spaghetti not... code to me. Uh, is that where there's the boxes and there's lines going to these boxes? I've seen various codes like yeah, that. Yeah, but that, that I mean, that term comes from uh, programming where you're trying to read this code and it's just like, what? And then I got to go down here and then what the, f okay. okay. It's, it's just, it's, it's poorly formatted and that's a lot easier to clean up. Whereas with the blue, that's what it's called, blueprint. Mm. Um, there's only so much you can do to clean that up. Yeah. Um, interesting but yeah i need to I, I gotta do it i gotta get in there and the other cool thing is there's so much free assets and unreal has paid a tremendous amount of money fired a lot of people to do it but they've paid right. a tremendous <laughs> amount of money uh to be giving away new assets every i don't know if it's every week or every month okay. so <clears throat> especially the people who have had it for a long time you just keep collecting them you want to make a forest all right i'm going to take all my my stuff and i'm just going to put it together and now that they have the uh what do you call it the uh the, the high detailed stuff what's yeah, that called I'm, I'm blanking on it but i know i've heard that term before yeah but... so now you don't really gotta worry about a lot of stuff mm. like that so people are just i don't know they're just gonna build and they're gonna put stuff together yeah and so there's there's never been a better time to get into we tried it a bit or you're still like i was trying to play mm. around with the the programming side of it and the gotcha. c plus plus so that's that's where i'd like to go um personally but yeah so i i didn't have any time to play games I, well that's not true i've been playing like when i have five minutes i've been playing uh, uh, uh majora's mask on the 3ds Ooh, okay yeah and it's like it's my comfort food game and i haven't played it in forever and it's just so that's one i've yet to play i don't i wouldn't do it now mm. it's if you didn't play it when you were a kid you're gonna come back and think this is just clunky as shit yeah yeah i can still get into that mindset like i loved uh ocarina Oh, so, then never mind. You probably could. I know that's it's a different way like time aspect, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. um, it's one that just passed me by and I never jumped into it. And who knows if they'll ever <laughs> revisit that because there's so many Zeldas. That, at least they're starting to like go and remake, remaster, I guess, you know, various old yeah. games. Like uh, there's the Island one, the Zelda Island one that I'm blanking on the name. That was Link's a GBA. Awakening. Link's Awakening, yeah. Yeah. There's that one. And they're starting to go back into the well and remaster. So, but I think it's going to be wild. You know, I wouldn't yeah. hold my breath for Ocarina or a Majora remaster, but yeah, yeah that's cool. I, so you're jumping into that. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know what it is lately, but I've just been like going down the time loop rabbit hole. Like last night, I, I couldn't figure out something to watch. And I, I watched a short film called, I think it's called Two Distant People or something, hmm. which is a short film. It's 30 minutes. It's on Netflix, but it's, uh, it's like this, this guy, uh, he's trying to get home from his like one night stand and this cop keeps killing him <laughs> okay. and like he just he resets or whatever yeah he resets at the one night stand and it's actually it's a really cool film mm. it'd be nice if it had a fucking ending okay uh because it sets up an ending and it's like oh by the way you don't get one yeah black lives matter walks out and i'm like wait <laughs> that's cool and all say their name but also give me the ending i would like the ending please it's the ambiguous where it's like it's up to you to kind of decide what happens kind of yeah. thing or that, or not no, even that. It, it just is like <laughs> no i'm gonna walk away and the camera's not gonna follow <laughs> okay I, fuck, okay interesting yeah it was good though hmm. but just it just blue balls yeah, yeah. i hear you <laughs> i hear you you haven't watched anything like crazy awesome that i can think of lately we'll go down these rabbit holes of uh the office but sure, they have the sure. super fan episodes which are extended mm -hmm. or it's basically like the full episode before they cut it for tv right i've been going through that and it's fun like seeing little bits that they that didn't make it um yeah nothing i do really want to see that new godzilla minus one i hear it's great yeah yeah it's definitely on my list i don't know if it's still in theaters i'll probably yeah. just wait till like it comes out but uh it looks awesome well if you want to see it i, I was i was yeah. thinking about making the offer this week because I'm, I'm jacked to see it i I heard, uh, I think Damon Hatfield referred to it as a really good movie that just happens to have Godzilla in it, which... <laughs> That's awesome. And I saw that it got uh, nominated for at least some kind of Academy Award. Um, oh, oh, maybe yeah. just in visual effects or whatever. On a but... shoestring budget of like yeah. $4 million or something tiny like that oh. for a movie like this. So That's awesome. That's insane. I can't imagine competing with the big boys on... Yeah. Yeah, and that's where, like, you mentioned UE5. It's like you can create, you know, movie-level yes. visual effects on that. 
engine alone. So it's like, you can do it if you know what you're doing. Yeah. It's never all this stuff. There's never been a better time. Yeah. I'm too dumb. To now do any if we of it, all but... weren't so poor, like that's right. the problem <laughs> on top of it. Yeah. 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 But well, well, should we get into the news? Yeah. We missed a good couple of, uh, of time frames sure. on some of the news we'll jump into was it that. a good time frame because i feel like it was like a thousand and one layoffs in that it was time. bad we'll yeah. start with some of the layoffs i don't have the thing pulled up here there was just to jump on the layoffs today there was a uh, a big one from from i want to say ubisoft this was a uh, embracer group so yeah. they own uh idos they laid off 97 employees and what's also tough with this is that they that studio was working on a new deus x game Right. So it was two years in development. It got canceled. Did you ever play the Deus Ex series at all? Um, I kind of, I played, so when they made the, the last two, I played, uh, I can never keep their titles straight. Yeah, there's like uh, Mankind Divided, there's something else. And then Human Revolution. Yeah. And I played the first one most of the way through. Of the newer, like, yeah. redos of and it. They're really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. The gameplay kind of sucks. Mm. Uh, like you get into a firefight and you just don't want to be there. Yeah, um, but that's just, exactly how I feel. The the little bit of that I played of one of the newer ones. Um, yeah, I didn't. It wasn't it wasn't there for me. But I know yeah. people love this series a lot. Yeah, and I I I've been meaning to play the one following up because it's it's a lot of that. Poly I think this is uh, is this mankind. I'm so this is sure. uh, mankind divided. We're looking at that footage. Not sure, but I know the second one is a lot prettier looking. Yeah. Um, and it polishes up a lot of those mechanics. And I think most of it takes place within a small area of Prague. And that's really cool. I like yeah. small gameplay spaces and right. kind of doing that stuff. And like you could kill a shopkeeper. And then when you come back to that area later that day, that shop is closed for the rest Ooh, of the game. Interesting. Like, that's awesome. Okay. I think this is the first one, but I'm not yeah. positive. And like we're looking at footage. Uh, I remember a lot of mechanics and stuff that kind of like went over my head. But I know that if I stuck with it, it'd make more sense. But sometimes right all at once, I just it just turns me off when there's like sure, all this stuff sure. that can happen. I will say, though, uh, these games have the best hacking mechanic in any video game I've played. Because okay. while it's abstract, it's still just like, I don't know, you got a timer thing, and you're trying to anti-hack this other thing, and they're coming for you. So you're you're trying to defeat their antivirus wall. It, I think that was Is really anti-hacking... Cool. Locking no, the door? Well, well no. Isn't that the opposite of I'm probably the wrong word? Oh, I, see, gotcha. I, thought, but like, I thought that's what they were referencing it. Yeah, the... it's like they're trying to you're hacking into a thing, they're trying to get you and you're like trying like to the slow, firewall. You're trying to slow them down. You can't stop them from getting you. You can slow them down so you can finish what you're doing first. Gotcha. And that's pretty cool. Um but yeah, it's really sad to see this. Um there's also the big one Xbox laid off. Uh, Microsoft oh, laid God, off like 1,900 people. We're... Yeah, yeah, that's that's insane. So. There's a thing I didn't pull up, but it's it was circulating on Twitter, and people were um, quantifying the data. So like the first month in 2024, there's been about it's like 5,000 at that point, five 5,600 layoffs in the games industry. Yeah. When the year before there was around 10,000, so yeah. we're already halfway through what they did last year in the yeah. first month of this year, it's, it, which is insane. Yeah. I, I read an interesting article on NPR and there's a lot of reasons why they're, this is happening. Sure. Most of them are shit. Um, but one thing they kind of pointed out is um, when these layoffs start happening, they kind of make it a little bit like when a bunch of them happen, they make it a little bit. Okay. You can sneak in your mass layoff and people aren't just going to be mad at you. They're like, yeah. Oh, it's a big problem. So that's, that's true. It's like, okay, maybe if they had plans for like end of the month, next month, and they're like, just do it now. Yeah. <laughs> to get into this this more larger debate that people will have versus like just single out singling out the various uh, devs and or studios rather. But yeah. So yeah, it's really shitty. Or something I thought was interesting is uh, this one fellow from Nintendo Life pointing out that Japan doesn't have this problem. Mm. Because there you have they just to... put you in a corner room that has no view or whatever. Like, or, don't they have a different structure of how they demote you? Right. So, well, part of it is like either a you have to have a reason to fire someone, mm. and then b uh, the government makes you have to try something else before you just mass lay off people. Okay. For stuff. So if you're if your company is losing money, uh, top to executives got to take a pay cut. So that's probably what happened with Nintendo when yeah. Iwata and a lot of those people took pay cuts. Legally, they might have had to have done that. Was it the Wii U when they did a yeah. public thing, and it was a, uh, and it's so different, like a stark contrast from like what would happen in America. They won't, right. you know, but, actually apologize. Right, but these companies still do their layoffs in America because that doesn't that doesn't apply to a Nintendo of America, yeah. Sony of any of these people. 
So, right. but Japan and that's, but they also have these employees, like they're pointing out, like some of the employees that worked on Nintendo wonder or Mario wonder worked on the original Mario. Wow. Like, because there are so many rules to protect these employees, they stick around and that also makes a lot of these employee base better. You have that veteran presence yeah. and also the ability to teach the new employees from your veteran presence. So. Right, and especially in the, at least in America, in the game dev world and with studios, there's a lot of turnover, a lot of yes. turnover. And why you wouldn't want that, right? You'd want to keep people happy at their job, even if it means paying them more. I understand that at a higher level, it's like you have whatever budget you need to keep in mind. That makes sense to me. But also it's like there's an argument for keeping these people that are um, trained, that are intelligent on what they're doing, keeping them there happy so that you don't have to retrain people coming in but like that would lose you money i just don't understand yeah. what the and it goes over my head i'm not a businessman I, I have no idea how it works but it's just like why why yeah. is it happening i think you know there's a there's a i don't know who said it but it's just like every every game is a miracle that it gets made and as things get more complicated it's becoming more and more of a miracle like you see that with suicide squad where how the f 10 years how the fuck that thing even get out the door yeah and you bring that argument up or bring that point up and i can see where when i think of rocksteady and yeah. people have been uh, beating this to death online lately you have their core batman games that really like revolutionized combat people love them they're adored and then you have them announce this which is like them trying to just jump on a on a wave of what's popular with like live service games with stuff that's yeah. Fortnite flashy. Chase all the trends from five years ago. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly from five years ago. But I can see where when you bring that up with how risky it is in game development with how crazy expensive yes. these budgets are, where it's like there's less chances you can take on that level. So you gotta go for what on on paper would make you money, yeah. which is Suicide Squad. So it makes more sense to me now with that lens. But looking at what they've done before, it's like, well, why would you make this? Like, why wouldn't you yeah. go for something that's like that when people love it? And I assume you made money doing that, too. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll and switch that... over to you. Fin let you finish your point. But no, we'll switch over to you're good. Suicide Squad. Um, that happened. Uh, it's happening. It came out this week uh, in early, not early access, but like early release for people it, that pre-ordered. Well, I think they, I, so it is early release, but I think they may have actually used the word early access or okay. maybe. I, I could be wrong. It'd be smart if they did. Yeah. Um, but it seems like it's, you know, this is the game you're getting if you wait mm -hmm. till Friday when it officially comes out. Um, there was drama over the past couple weeks with different outlets not getting review codes. Yeah, uh, yeah, the big yeah, one was yeah. IGN. They were vocal on it. Um, and so what I found interesting was just picking that apart was in the comments. So IGN revealed that they had asked WB directly and they denied them. Right. But a lot of outlets, I don't think any really got. Any. Yeah. yeah. So but the way they did word it made it sound personal. Right. And so there could be some like, you know, they are taking it personally kind of thing in that tweet. But usually it doesn't bode well for games that don't have review access beforehand. But it's not always the case. Like somebody pointed out the Doom 2016. Bethesda does not give out. And games Bethesda has like a blanket thing, which is fine. But it seems like for Hogwarts and other games, they've let outlets play it early. So it's like right. it's weird to pick and choose. So that just like gave people bad oh, vibes. Oh, WB did. Really? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then. But also tied with that was I, since IGN was the big one talking about it, mm -hmm. people in the comments seemed to roast them. And I guess I didn't realize, but online everyone hates IGN. I grew up with them being like a pre pretty like positive like outlet to look at, and I trust them. I still do. But uh, online people were just like, "That's what you get for covering them negative negatively," which is oh, going about the previews that were like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm just like, now became a protest where I'm going to buy this game now just because you don't like it. But I'm like, they're. <laughs> That doesn't help you. That helps whatever entity that owns WB. It's like, that's only protecting them yeah. if you buy this thing blindly. These outlets are, in theory, trying to give you an idea of what the game's going to be, which is why they want to play it before you yeah. to tell you what they think. Yeah, unfortunately, people on the internet are just, just the worst. And it's, it's true. Like, I don't know if you've ever gone to the comment section on any IGN review ever. Yeah. Uh, the worst. Yeah, I'm always like, why are you guys here then? Yeah. What are we doing? The top comment will always just be the number. Yeah. And then it's like, come Or on. like, oh, but you gave whatever game, you know, yeah. a five out of 10 or it's like, okay, what, what, what do you, why do you still go to this outlet then? But yeah. people just love to just talk shit. I think IGN though has been kind of the punching bag since kind of forever, especially once they became very successful. Yeah, they're the biggest, I would argue they're the yeah. biggest one out there for sure. That's yeah. still alive, that's still running today. But I would also wouldn't say that you can't criticize them. You absolutely can and should. Sure. It's just like it should go both ways. You should be criticizing the actual um, 
companies that own these these devs, these studios. I don't put any flack towards the studio as far as like when it comes to review codes, this is often like a publisher thing. It's like oh, they're trying absolutely. to protect their 100%. IP. They want to make sure. So even when they're like, we're not going to give this to anybody, I can even get that because that's their job to be like, we're going to protect this thing to try and make sales. The yeah. dev doesn't give a shit. And they're maybe not even a, a part of that conversation. They're just making the game. It's yeah. handed off to somebody else to handle how review codes happen and who gets to see it and what. Yeah. So there's just a lot of moving parts, but it's just like to be angry at the people that are trying to tell you what they think to help you decide beforehand. It seems bonkers to me to, to be angry at them. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, do you it's have any ridiculous. desire to play this? I kind of do now. I've yeah. been, I've been watching a fair amount of streamers play it. I think the one thing that annoys me is when I'm watching and it's like three minutes of gameplay, two minutes of cutscenes, three minutes of gameplay, two minutes of cutscenes. And that's clearly, that's where a lot of this money went here. Um, and this, fa I wonder if the face tech, the face tech looks very similar to, uh, Mortal Kombat. So I wonder if that team kind of helped them out and hmm. gave this them this really fantastic face. That's tech. true. That's WB still too, right? Yeah, but some of the gameplay in this looks kind of fun. One guy was whipping around on King Shark, and he can just go from like floor level to twelfth floor and yeah, then like slam yeah. back down. Or uh, dead shots, uh, like poorly functioning jetpack looks kind of fun it seems <laughs> like it's a struggle for him to stay in the air yeah um so you're just you land and then Harley you has slide the, the you... spider-man swing with her thing yeah. right i haven't seen anyone use that so at least it looks like we maybe have some fun movement mechanics um so i'm i'd, I'd give it a shot um it does look fun like that's one thing that i can't deny with the with the gameplay is like it looks fun it looks like there is a focus on movement on always moving it almost gives me the vibes of like not insomniac now but like um oh god what's their last one before spider-man oh, uh, sunset overdrive sunset overdrive i did get some vibes especially with deadshot because of the way he's like mm. bouncing around different stuff he can't stay in the air for forever yeah um so i'm getting some of those vibes too yeah i can see that there was a lot of people roasting them when the previews came out with the HUD and like all the different stuff popping up on screen and these different meters and like yeah. things you're unlocking and currency. And it's like that for sure turns me off. But like if they can balance that, but also it's like, I'll look at other gameplay and it's not that bad. So it's like you're, people are picking the worst time to like take a snapshot and show sure. like, this is what the game looks like 24 seven. It's like, that's not the case. Yeah. I guess the, the other thing that does bug me a little bit about the, the and maybe this is more fun when you're playing it, but it seems like every mission is go to an area defend it for however many minutes or survive for many waves and then cut scene and yeah. or go to the next area to do that again like we're gonna need some good mission variety here and i worry that they don't have it right that's gonna be the legs of this thing is because it's a it's a live service game right so it's like yeah. you finish your campaign and then you they want you to keep playing the game like that's what they've banked on yeah. so what's gonna be there does the gameplay get stale after a while is there enough challenge missions i know they've announced some of the dlc they'll come up by like there's the joker thing coming out mm -hmm. eventually which is cool but it's like uh, what is the gameplay loop fun enough to keep going if it's not going to be its own single player campaign i don't know i also question like what was the delay because i thought the delay would be like okay we're gonna tear out all this live service stuff that people hate that's all there yeah it looks the same visually too so is this just in a way worse state like, could this have been an absolute clusterfuck if it came out a year ago? Because now it's a mild clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just a, yeah, like mixed controversy. Because, yeah, you're right. It yeah. was about a year that they, they pushed it. Yeah. And they were pretty close to releasing at that point. And it was like the Halo Infinite kind of situation where they said, okay, we're listening to the community. We hear you. But then what comes out is still <laughs> the same thing. Maybe it was just more bug stuff. Where it's just like we just have a lot of bugs under the hood that we need to work on. Isn't that what like Destiny would do with a lot of their stuff? It's like, yeah, we hear you. We're still gonna do what the fuck we were gonna <laughs> yeah. do beforehand. We still need to make yeah. money or make this profitable or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. In the you talk, we we're talking about um, the layoffs and stuff. Um, yeah. And you think about a AAA studio like Rocksteady, they're known for Batman. They're a big deal, but there was uh, something in the news recently about some of the founding members of Rocksteady finding their own studio. So a lot of these studios now, as they evolve, whatever made them what they're synonymous for, they end up just like moving and doing their own thing. So yeah. it's like you kind of can't expect the same level from them if stuff has changed, which yeah. stuff often changes with these studios. Yeah, and that's what we were, we were talking about a little bit before the stream, and we're seeing a lot of that, especially now that we have these 
um, these layoffs. And I always wonder sometimes with these layoffs, if it's less cruel to just shutter the studio than to lay off a bunch of people and then maybe eventually shutter it. Mm. Cause you saw like Vo Volition just got shut down. Well, Volition just opened up a new, the people from Volition just opened up a new studio. Gotcha. Um, or we're seeing, um, yeah. So, or sometimes people just leaving cause the work environment sucks. Like a lot of the people, um, at, um, who made Redfall? Who oh, it's Arcane. Made, uh, yeah. Austin or whatever. Arcane Austin. They fucked off and went over to, um, Wolf Eye Studio. And mm. we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of that. So hopefully, you know, this is really shitty. Like this is not an upside, but maybe as a slight upside of this, these people can come together and get yeah. their own studios that maybe won't treat them like shit. I think if there's any silver lining for the mass layoff stuff that's happening now is the fact that there seems to be more studios than ever. And that's just yeah. me talking straight out of my ass. But like with I every, I don't think it is well, with every, every week that goes by, it's always like a, the new studio from X devs from blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's always happening. Yeah. And so maybe there's still jobs for these. I'm assuming there's still jobs for these people to go to. So hopefully they can find the studio that's going to value their talent and keep them and, it seems like it's not a part of these like really big AAA studios. It's going to be the smaller stuff, which is, but that's, that's, that's good. That's so positive. That's a way for these people to go elsewhere and still work on stuff that they care about. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's interesting. I mean, going back to suicide squad, um, I would, I did try the, the beta that came out, the pre alpha or whatever right, that, right. that came out. And I didn't like the, the start of it. We talked about that. Like that seems slow. Yeah. It seems like that carried over to the game um for what we're saying from watching streams um but the once you get the hang of the movement per character mm -hmm. that did seem fun um i just i'm one of the weirdos that would love a single player experience and you can play sure. it like that they did yeah. drive that home i was I, the guy i was watching was and he he seemed to be really enjoying it um i i guess here's the other thing because how do you feel about looter shooters because this is this is 100 percent a looter shooter interesting and Not. i know you play destiny so I know. Yeah, although even with Destiny, um, I played that single player, just finished the campaign, and maybe kept going a little bit longer, but okay. I was out. And that's just stuff beyond that doesn't call out to me. Sure. But with the term looter shooter, if you throw in like something like Borderlands, I'm cool with that. Really? Okay. But um, but that's also something where I don't have to rely on a party. Uh, I'm looking for the what is your your overarching story, the thing that you want to funnel me through. I want to play that. Yeah, and then beyond that, I don't want to keep grinding to like find whatever new weapons or or gear if that story is complete. I yeah. just kind of tap out after that. I guess that's the thing with Borderlands, though, is like you don't have to grind ever. You can just go through like a single player story mm. um, and uh, find stuff, find guns. There's yeah, the, there's the vending machine. Naturally, and stuff. find a better gun as you yeah. go. So I c I could see that being it's basically Halo, but with Diablo mixed in. That's cool. Yeah, and I'm I'm more I lean more that direction versus something like this where it's like they want to keep you playing uh this thing indefinitely and they want the loop to also be like what can you unlock, what kind of gear, you know, yeah. different stuff can you have? And that's just not my vibe. Now is this is this on Game Pass? Now the I don't know. I would I could see this thing quickly getting there. But also, it depends on what this first week looks looks like for actual sales. Okay. If it does gangbusters, then I think it's you know it's gonna be a while before we see a sale or like a Game Pass thing. But is it seventy? I think it is still full retail seventy bucks. I want to play it, but I'm not sure I want to pay it. But what I've seen, even I on PC, it was seventy. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, we'll see. I mean, it's it's still yet to officially come out, so we'll see what the sales look like. Because oh, it could be they're they're sitting on something that's highly profitable like um there was that last game in the batman universe which was batman gotham knights that oh, one did yeah. commercially well even did though there was a lot really? of yeah okay. there's a lot of drama or like you know mixed reviews with that game but it did commercially well so this i could see it, this one also doing that too yeah that was an interesting that reminds me of a statement i saw i don't know if you have this in your article but um tencent put out like a statement or something today talking about they weren't happy with last year because i guess this last year like all these studios are just like doing gangbusters, crazy, awesome titles. And Tencent was like, "We're just tread water." Mm. It's like, I'm, as this uh, Tencent feels its game business achieved nothing during yeah, 2023, like, but they own a stake in like everything at this yeah, point. Literally everything. Hmm. So maybe they didn't see the growth they wanted, or these are what are they Saudi Arabia uh, investors for Tencent, or is it Chinese investors? I believe they're Chinese. Okay, Saudi was. 
That's um, another group that's well. Sa- Saudis were uh, uh, backing Embracer. Okay, so that's gotcha. where that guy was getting all his money from. Gotcha. And maybe with Tencent, if it's a Chinese company or Chinese uh, funders. Mm-hmm. Um, they're looking at the potential rise in gaming and they're just like, okay, throw money on it. We want to see a, a return on our investment. And they don't yeah. see that, you know, astronomical return. They're like, Hey, this isn't profitable, but really it's like, it's a slow rise. Although it is a big rise every year, yeah. it's still crazy profitable for gaming as a whole, but maybe it's just like, well, we wanted to make 20 billion. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, chill, dude. <laughs> That's my concern is that they're going to pull a square Enix where square Enix, like what it, it only made $2 million. Right. Like, Cut it yeah. or Embracer, like we're talking about them with uh, Eidos. Yeah, that's how they lost Eidos. Yes, yeah. they had, them. and they bought just tons of studios over the past couple of years, and now it's like it's catching up to them. Where it's like, okay, we can't keep this afloat. Why yeah. the fuck did you buy all these studios? Just because you could, I guess. They thought more money was coming, and then that deal f- fell through. Right. So, I... well, Gavin, we'll move on here. Um, some switch rumors. Always switch rumors. Yep. It is interesting, though, with a lot of these Switch rumors, like, somebody will say it. It's not even leaking it at this point. Like, a bunch of people are just like, yeah, it's got an 8-inch LCD screen. Right. And then everyone's like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how desperate we are, or at least, like, gaming outlets are for news with the Switch. Yeah. But, yeah, so the, the scuttlebutt the past couple weeks was the Switch 2 reportedly has an 8-inch LCD screen. And people are picking apart the fact that it's not OLED, it's LCD. Yeah. It seems like the future is OLED, but not really, right? So that's one I would push back on. You have uh, the Valve um, Steam Deck yeah. has an OLED model. Even Switch has an OLED model, uh-huh. but they're slightly more expensive to produce. And so mm-hmm. it seems like they're still trying to balance, like, how do we make a profit out of this, off of this versus, like, leaning towards the future? Right. And then Nintendo is notorious for, like, bare bones hardware, it seems like, but also, like, battery life is really important to them. So yeah. it seems like with LCD, well, they would lean that way. Yeah, I think OLED, OLED, I believe, is better for your battery. Okay, then what are we doing here? <laughs> Throw an OLED on that they're, Switch they're 2. They're more expensive, and okay. Nintendo is perpetually five years behind. So, yeah. But they do strike a good balance with like keeping it affordable. Like I think of like the original Game Boy. Yeah. There's all these, um, once, they were, once they were you know um, the big uh, thing on the market, there was a lot of these competitors making something that was more powerful, mm-hmm. better screen, blah, 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 better graphics, but the battery life always sucked. Or it was way more expensive. Right. And Game Boy kept trucking along because they kept those things as their core, you know, focus of of affordability and battery life. And it seems like with Switch, they can't shake that. They're continuing on with that. And some of those bets don't necessarily pay off. I didn't realize that the Virtual Boy was red only because it'd be too expensive to do all three colors. I did not know that. (laughs) I just thought that was just like the limit of that technology at that point. Yeah, I wonder if it actually would have been more popular if you had all actual and... three actual color. How much? Can you look up real quick? How much did the fucking Virtual Boy cost? Yeah. How much? In all caps. No, you gotta continue in all caps. That's how you look. <laughs> I had it said, and I can't, I can't look at it. So one seventy nine. Oh, now in nineteen ninety five. For like a thing with eight games and Lord knows those were probably expensive. Now it's 180 bucks in 1995. Let's look at inflation. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Bear with I didn't me. realize how much some of this stuff nope. cost when we were kids. Like my coworkers tell me that Street Fighter Two or whatever, when it came out for the Super Nintendo, was a hundred dollars. Yeah, a lot of that's one thing that that went past our heads because I think as kids we look back, it's like our parents hate us; they wouldn't buy us yeah, any games. Exactly. But really, they were actually like they weren't just like following the fifty dollar, forty dollar model yeah. that we have today. It's like they they fluctuate. A lot of them were different prices. The struggle bus was worse back then, apparently. So Virtual Boy now would be three hundred fifty seven dollars. Fucking. Which, if you look at like okay. the the um, Oculus, they would go for about three hundred four hundred bucks. So it's in, it's in in line with that. I buy an Oculus, There's but that is thing. a good amount of change now. Yeah, I did not know about about the Virtual Boy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was pretty funny. I think that was a did you know or whatever those things gotcha. are called, but. Yeah, go back to Switch 2. So we have that as the potential, the Aiden screen. But also what was floating around was, this was maybe two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I, I texted you at the time. So GameShark, which was, they're known for making these peripherals for unlocking uh, cheat codes on like the Super right. Nintendo, Sega, Sega Genesis. Uh, they still they still survive. They're a company now, but they're called AI Shark. And they're focused on like, not hacks, but like AI generated stuff that helps you be better at games. I don't yeah, know how that works. I, I read that and I still don't know what that means. No, if it's not cheating, I don't know what they're actually doing. That's yeah, not gonna get no one's going to beat them to the market because no one knows what the fuck it is. <laughs> yeah. 
Now they are the ones who potentially leaked a date for the Switch 2, which would be September. Yeah. Um, they rolled it back and said like, oh, you know, some kind of like just press release mm -hmm. covering all the corners. But um, if that's to be believed, which I wouldn't, I lean more towards this being real because these outlets mess up all the time, especially one that like doesn't realize that they're going to mess something up. I think of like the Xbox not redacted, you know, like legal form yeah. that happened a couple of months ago. But I could see a uh, September release for this. It's still before holiday. Yeah. This original Switch released, it was like spring. Like it was way before the holiday season. Okay. Yeah. I feel like it was, yeah, February, March, something like that. It was a yeah. good while. I, I do, I'm stealing a theory from IGN of, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense that, so that time was already rumored. Okay. Uh, these people are coming back out of nowhere. They're trying to grab a little free press, oh. pretend to leak it. Who who would hack the system like that than a company called <laughs> fucking Game Shark? Yeah, yeah. You're so onto something here. It's it's very much in their character. I'm I'm totally on that that uh, Brandam says in the chat the virtual boy would give people a headache. And yes, it is. That's did. what I heard. Did you ever use one long I've talked to Brandon about it in the past. Um I, the only time I got to play it was at various stores. So like Same. Sears. Same. They'd have the kiosk where you could try yeah. it. And I remember being like, you have to like kind of focus on it and like, yeah, I guess it's cool. I can see stuff. But then you just walk away. It wasn't like I have to buy this. I have to convince somebody to yeah. like buy it for me. It was just <laughs> neat. I don't know. I was thinking about the virtual boy the other day and like these games that like parents didn't buy back in the day. So like, you ever wish you could just go back in time and be like, don't buy that. You don't need uh, Astro's bowling lanes yeah. for the N64 with your Christmas money. Go any anything, something else, please. <laughs> yeah, you have you can travel back in time, but the only ability you have is just telling you not to buy the whatever Ex thing. Exactly. This is how I would use. I could I fix my life? Yes, but by <laughs> buying the correct video games. Mine it's, is not even buying a game; it's renting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the game where Did you have a rent a game that actually ruined your childhood basically i'd still burn in my brain it's like a weekend where it was me and my uncle renting a game <laughs> we were taken to it wasn't even blockbuster it was like whatever store that would let you rent games to, okay okay supermarket but um it was where's mario and it's for the is, super nintendo do you mean mario is missing mario's missing oh yeah absolutely yeah. that's childhood record yeah and it's one where it's like we're looking through and it's like i've never heard of this mario game but it's mario <laughs> that's cool and this is back when you oh, just have the, oh the 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 cover yeah and not even like these are this is, it's like a um just a grocery store where they have the back mm -hmm. of it doesn't have the actual game it's just no nope. information it's just the front yeah and so not even a disclaimer saying what it is it's just where mario's missing i'm like okay but it's like a learning yeah. sim adventure thing you play as Luigi. Yeah. So Mario's literally missing. Even if you weren't Luigi, that game is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it is terrible. It could be hentai on it. It'd still be a bad game. <laughs> I do remember. Now, I can't remember if it was Mario's or Mi Mario's missing or there was another one of that style. Mm. But did you get to the like first person stage where you're like surfing on a Yoshi? No, that would be awesome. Are yeah, me? it was like really cool. On using... Super Nintendo, they did that. Yeah, it was using Mode Seven and everything. This game also, I thought was interesting, came out on PC. That's where I played Mario is Missing and or whatever the the one that's almost exactly like it. Yeah, uh, and couldn't figure out jack shit. Uh, God, and yeah. it's like he's all over the world, right? So you have to like it's uh, history trivia or like you know geography related trivia and stuff there's questions you have to answer it's so funny that you mentioned hentai because this looks like something on like newgrounds.com back in the day this would be like a fan game that someone would make yeah. and like the whole goal is and to see get they hentai. trick you because i love super mario sure. that's still my one of my, my favorite games of all time mm -hmm. and they're using those um images those sprites yes. To like, you know, try and trick you basically as a kid into thinking you're playing Mario. It's, that was 100% on purpose. There's no way that any of this trickery was an accident. Is so, there not? Is there not a certain first person? Thing? I don't know. Yeah, it it might like have been another person. one. Like oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Right in there. I think a little back. I'm scrolling through. He's just in a city this entire time, side scrolling. Mother. Okay. Maybe it's at the hump here. Maybe that's what people uh -huh. want to see. Oh, whoa. So, uh, this is the boss semi boss battle. battle. <laughs> oh, okay. You have to solve math problems to jump, I think. In yes, this yes. See, that was the sad thing is Math Blaster was more fun than these games. Oh, I love me some Math Blaster. Yeah, Let yeah. me tell you. And I suck at math, so it was really a heartache for me as a kid because, like, I want to play this game, but I'm so <laughs> terrible. And it's not doing what it's trying to do and, like, teach me math. So that actually did because I was, I was bad at math and I really wanted to play those games, though. So it did help with. Oh, math blaster 
Or what was? Did you ever play Number Muncher? No. God, that was a weird one. That is one of my favorite movies, but I've never played Number that Munch? game. <laughs> it's my favorite porn. <laughs> oh, dude, Math Blaster was something else. And we had a bunch cool. of like IMAX or whatever at the time at uh-huh. school. And yeah, this is what it had. And if we were good, we got to play this. And so, yeah, this you best was believe like, I was on I think, point. I think there were times when like I would stay late after class to play. <laughs> yeah, like a true, that's what you know. Like, oh, this is a freaking nerd here. Yeah. That's, that's but yeah. Of, yeah. I don't know what this has to do with math. Maybe I think at this was... point, you're just clicking the garbage, but there was math involved for sure. Okay. Maybe we're playing on. Oh, okay. That might have been your. <laughs> the clicking is your reward for solving the math, basically. Okay. okay. Yeah, Math Blasters. Oh, this is a, yeah. Bring back Math Blasters. Oh, these kids would riot if they had to play this on Switch. <laughs> There's no way these game, this series still exists, but it should. Brand M says Number Muncher was a good game. So this is a real thing? Number Muncher, it was like, I played it on like a very old Mac. I think it was on my black and white Mac. Um, I get a so, virus for searching Number Muncher on my yeah, computer. Yeah, actually. Is this what it looks like? I have, so I'm not even sure if we're... You know the funny later. thing? I think he showed up in... Um, I could be wrong, but I think he showed up in Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, really? <laughs> I think so. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, he's... I it don't is even, this, though? Yeah, I don't even remember what you were doing. And I had to... I couldn't... I was very young, um, so my sister had to play this for me because mm. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Multiples of two. Okay. So you're just, just even numbers, then. Well, I'll kill it now if I play number my <laughs> Troggle. Why does it say Troggle on the side? Oh yeah, this guy who I like as a kid, I was always thinking was like a like a demon version of a who, who's who's the purple guy from uh, McDonald's? Yeah, Grimace. Yeah, it's like Demon Grimace. He's like the <laughs> white trash version or whatever. He's like missing teeth, <laughs> smoking meth. Yeah. I need a like tax muncher or Ooh. rent muncher. Something explains like actual uh, adult things to me. We need to actually do tax muncher. Yeah, it does your taxes and you're playing the game. Yeah, and there we go. No, I'm down for that. And it, but it's different because if like you go to jail in the game, you go to jail for real. <laughs> yeah, there's real repercussions. <laughs> you get swatted for real. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, that's awesome. I don't even muncher. know what started this conversation. Who knows, Gavin? Too many rabbit holes. Um, this was interesting. I don't oh, know if you caught this. There we go. Yeah. Switch to confirms coming. Um, this is interesting. Uh, Cliff Bozinski was in the news again recently, uh, just from this comment on Gears of War. Oh, okay. Um, so I pulled this up. He tweeted, and I thought I'd like to get your reaction on that. I haven't thought about him in so long. So he's been doing a lot of stuff. He's um, so he's not really doing a lot of game dev stuff lately. Sure. But he's writing books. Um, he's out in the in the in, on the internet still. But he talked about how um, no one's really approached him. This is a long tweet from him, but right. long story short, no one's approached him for any kind of Gears of War, um, you know, advice or any like interpretation. Like, hey, where would you take this, this, uh, you know, this series? What would you do with it? Right. Would you want to be on board as like uh, some kind of you know just person behind the scenes? And he mentions like it'd be smart with like with where Gears of War was with bringing uh, Cliff Bozinski back on just as a name like hey he's helping us you know write the story or right. as an advisor. He's mentioned they have they've done nothing over that for the past ten years and nothing recently. And it seems like the way to go with Gears would be to some kind of reboot. People love the the recent ones, sure, yeah. but like some kind of spiritual reboot would be good. He's not been approached about that at all, and he's kind of bummed. But he's mentioned how he's just kind of he's at peace with that. It's not happening. Sure. But when you look back at Gears, do you think he's – I would agree with him. Where it's like I'd love to see him back as some kind of advisor on that Gears of War series. But mm-hmm. do you want them to just keep going in this new direction, go back some kind of reboot thing? I mean, I could see why they'd be a little hesitant. Didn't his like studio that he formed put out – no. Yes. No, I'm not saying like he's handling the development stuff. I'm saying okay. like as far as like, hey, we want to get back to whatever core vibe of Gears. Would you be on as some kind of right. input? And then we can, when we when we end, end up uh, advertising the game, it's like we have you out talking about it. They always do this with like the Terminator franchise where they have, um, um, oh God, James Cameron. They always have him, like they ask him like, what do you think about this new one? And like they'll, you can tell when they pay him enough because he's like, oh, it's great. Like I, I, I'm on some kind of advisor. They're going in a great direction, like something like that, where it's like it's helping them to advertise the game or the movie, rather. So the mistake you're kind of making is that very early on, the game industry, at least in America, very much didn't want names on stuff. Mm. We wanted everyone replaceable. You're getting too big. We're going to get rid of you. We're going to put somebody new in there because then we have to pay you more. 
sure. if you're a big name. Like, yeah, you see these in Japan, but they came out very early on with a lot of stuff. So we have what? We have Sid Meier. Yeah, um, Nintendo guy, uh, Mario guy. Um, but I'm talking American studios. Here. Oh, okay, so okay. We, so yeah, have... true. Well, the first ones I think of are like Kojima, um, whatever. The... Who, <laughs> I can't think of the Mario Who's the Rainbow guy? Six guy? Tom Clancy. Yeah, but he's a uh, Tom Clancy bucks. doesn't do shit for this. Yeah, they put his name on it and send him a check. True, true. So that's that's what these big God, this game looks so fucking good. Yeah, we're looking at the actual um, not remaster. They did some kind of up-res version for the Xbox. Right. But and I guess with the Gears of War franchise, do you think fans even care about Cliff anymore if they think about I him? I don't think so. Like, but I grew up like this was this was dope, and this wasn't that long ago where it's like yeah. I still remember who Cliff Blazinski is. Uh, I remember these core three Gears of War games and how special they were, and they were just like weird and different. Yeah, where his name still has value to me. Like, but I guess if they're going forward, does that value still stay there? But is it because they haven't tried to keep that there? Or right. they're just trying to make something else. I also don't know how many game Gears of War games he even worked on. Was I would part say of the, the first. Trilogy? I think the first three at least, okay. and I'm pretty sure after that, it 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 wasn't. He wasn't involved. Yeah, my my concern about Gears is it, and I I like Gears. I think Gears is very good, but it does kind of feel like a dinosaur. It does. Um, it's a fun dinosaur. Yeah. But dinosaurs and I cool. like it, and it's yeah. <laughs> but it's a, like it's a dinosaur that's not even that old. No, but I don't, I don't feel. And in a world where everyone's trying to follow Call of Duty, Fortnite, why not lean harder into this that was different? Yeah, you know, and they're still making a Gears behind the scenes for sure. Like the right, right. Uh, coalition is definitely working on the next one. Um, not officially. Oh, I mean, they they did put out like an image saying like we're working on something, yeah. which is nice because I I feel bad for the coalition in the sense of they felt like a Microsoft support studio. Mm. They brought them in like, hey, your tech's not very good. We're gonna bring in the coalition. You don't understand Unreal Five. These guys literally know everything about it. So they've been doing a lot of the support role, and I imagine that's not as satisfying sure. as getting to make your own game. So I hope I think they are dedicated to Gears. It seems like it's like a Gear Studio now. Yeah. So. It'd be nice if they kind of got to do their own thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I also worry that it's going to have like it's Halo Infinite moment. I don't know when the next time we're going to see a Halo game. And they've said, I thought Halo Infinite was going to be, this is the platform and we're going to be playing Halo. That's what it, it was. It was advertised as right. we're going to keep adding story content to this, not just multiplayer. And that's not it anymore. No. So my concern would be they put out a subpar gears. It doesn't do the sales numbers and Microsoft yeah, gets because they've they've been treating what is it three four three that does Halo? Yeah, they have not been treating them very well. No, so. no, it's uh although it's it's two things at once where it's like they're also excelling at the multiplayer. Like they turned it around. Yeah, that that um that community is there. They're still hungry for content. They're still making more um, updates to multiplayer maps and whatnot. So it's like they excelled there, but it's almost like two. It, it was two after the fact where people just kind of wrote them off. Sure, and that community um shrunk but it was still there yeah so it's a bummer and you're right uh halo was halo infinite was kind of geared as something that was going to be continuous story-wise there was something i didn't pull it up but it was in the news a couple weeks ago it was last week that there was a halo um battle royale that was worked on and it was canceled and i, I don't know wanted if was... this for so oh, long yeah. there was a time if you remember we got together and watched a uh, xbox um e3 back when it was like still like hey this is our e3 thing and they had all these, this was maybe 2019, 2020. Okay. They had all these, they had a hundred Xboxes and TVs on stage. Okay. Remember this? And they didn't do anything with it. But at the okay. time it was like, oh, this is the show off. Uh, Cause this is also when yeah, Fortnite yeah. was hot, still is hot. But like, it would seem like, oh, this is them getting ready to announce like, and everyone's playing this on stage. We're playing Halo, Battle yeah. Royale. Nothing happened. They had a hundred fucking screens on, on, on stage with Xboxes for nothing. I but that, I that's, don't, but that doesn't surprise me. No, but that made me think like, oh, okay, this is finally happening. Nope. And so you hear that they were working on it, but maybe it was in a really bad state, or they think there's no value in that franchise anymore, or we're not for battle royale. They gotta steer towards whatever the next direction is. That could be. I mean, a lot of these genres, once they sort of calcify, they can be impossible to crack into. Fortnite got in there super early and also stole a lot of stuff from PUBG. You look yeah. at like League of Legends and Dota 2. No other MOBA could get in there. Like even some really good one, like Smite, is barely hanging on. Mm. Like it's it's it, once these genres calcify, because you really only need so many. 
Yeah, although don't tell that to any other studio because they're all trying to crack in. They all think yeah. like, but it might work for me, and then they, they make their attempt. Well, but don't it's like, worry. The next Batman game is going to be a battle royale. <laughs> yeah. Now it might work. Now, I think if you wait long enough, that you wait for the king to fall off, then there's your chance. So, like As people get tired of stuff like Call of Duty, a Fortnite, then you're yeah. just, there's your chance to jump in. They could bring back, can you can you look up on YouTube, uh, Gotham City Imposters? They just bring this back. Was that a PC thing? It was it was like an arena shooter. I think it was on okay. consoles too, but it was like it was uh an arena shooter facing the Batman. But no universe? one's actual like Batman or the villains. You're all like wannabes. And let's it, see some gameplay, but yeah, let's see. This does see. this isn't old, right? This seems familiar. It's super old, yeah. It's 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 gone. Oh but... twelve years ago is when the trailer went up. Okay. Well, we're making me feel real old. I thought it wasn't. So this is their CG announcement thing. But yeah, what did the game? So this play... is like, you know, in Dark Knight when there was the guy that's like, I'm not wearing hockey pads. You get to play as hockey pads. <laughs> okay. So it's literally them just like following these various villains and heroes and fighting against each other. Yeah, I think it was just like an arena shooter. Gotcha, gotcha. So, but I don't know. Interesting. Let's bring this back and make this a battle royale in that huge city. That was one thing we didn't mention about uh, 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 the, the the new Batman game. That city is huge and super detailed, and you're like crazy up high. Like the draw distances yeah. are awesome. It's a great looking. The game. tech is there. It does look samey to me. If that's the right sure. word, absolutely. Where any point you're in the city, it's like besides that big floating alien thing in the sky. I don't know where the hell I would be at. Right. But it is highly detailed and like. It's not popping. Stuff isn't popping in from what I can tell. It's like it looks really good. Now, I might be able to sell you on it with a small spoiler. Mm -hmm. are, are you okay with a small You're spoiler? You're telling me the Justice League die? Yes. Oh, damn. Are you okay with a small spoiler? I can keep <laughs> yeah. it to myself. All yeah. right. Spoilers. Stream, stream don't, don't pay attention for two seconds. Now, say me, what if there are multiple dimensions of it? Or okay. Altered verses, like maybe one's post apocalyptic. And, ooh. So, and that changes the actual. Yeah map i've just seen one so far but it was like everything's covered in sand half the buildings are torn down like this one like the snyder batman future thing okay. exactly because right now they're mid apocalypse yeah hopping to another one where the apocalypse has already happened and the characters are different so like their lex Luthor was different and had hair Ooh, like now could this cool. be a way for them to keep the content going so like you keep an incentive 100%. to keep playing i think one uh i forget who was saying it but their theory is that's how like is this this plot is insane people are dying off they're like destroying the right. dc universe with this one like that's probably also how they're gonna save it is oh it's multiverse all this got flipped around but it's how they're bringing in i don't know if you saw the joker so, i did see the announcement of the the joker dlc but yeah he's gonna be a playable character and he's not Joker Joker. He's yeah. like, he never made it to super villain status. Gotcha. That's that's super neat. Yeah. I think his voice is going to annoy the shit out of people. <laughs> uh, I'm fine with it, but I get it if he's annoying to you. That's interesting. And I haven't heard, and maybe because it's like spoilery, but I haven't heard any outlets talk about that. Or they're just barely playing the game they're now. They're barely playing the game. <laughs> so they I don't, don't think know. anyone's at Endgame yet. But like, I so. wonder what that Endgame looks like, because that's yeah. the real testament. It's like, how long are people going to keep playing this? But that gives you a way out. It's like some kind of interdimensional, you know, thing that changes stuff so you keep playing the game yeah. i did see because one thing i was wondering about was it's called kill the justice league but it's like are you really going to kill them you're going to like put them in jail but i've seen footage of them actually killing them at least one character mm -hmm. so if you do that how does that work but if there's different dimensions bang bang boom you have a way to keep doing it interesting yeah. so uh brand m says that the gotham city imposters was that ps2 that sounds like the right Maybe PS3. This looks I like PS3. I want to say it was, I think I was in college at the time, so I think it was borderline like PS2, PS3 era. Because mm. this is when like you were starting to get a lot of arena shooters. People were butting around with this stuff. So Yeah. I think Brandam says that because he still has a PS2 and only plays PS2. I probably. mean, it's a, it's a great, great console. Yeah, it is. No, it's it is. one of the best of all Just time. Just got to give it the times. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> I'm saying, Gavin, let's move on. Uh, here's some bad news. So Metroid Prime 4. Um. The reason why I bring this up. Bad news. I, I don't know what's going on with this. <laughs> the what's, reason what's why I find we're like, on the five year anniversary. Of we are. This is the. Uh... Yeah. This is why I bring this up because maybe not bad, but it's also not. It's just a bummer. So uh, this was a couple days ago. We marked the five year anniversary of Nintendo announcing the reboot of the Metroid Prime development. So they gave the project to Retro uh, five years ago, right? Four years ago. Sorry, five years ago. <laughs> And it's been five years since we've heard anything. Now, 
we are on the cusp of Switch 2. It's definitely, I would say, I'm betting five bucks. 100%. It's launching yeah. this year, right? Do you think that even though we've been media blackout on on a Metroid update, do you think maybe we see this at Switch 2 announcement or some, oh. sometime soon that it's launching for Switch 2? They're skipping Switch. It's coming to Switch 2. Yeah, that's that's Just five years, question. and they're working on it. They haven't said that they stopped or that they had to reboot again. I'm going to say maybe not for I think the initial announcement's going to be pretty simple like just just like hey here's the Switch 2 here's a couple of features and I think when they do the like a little closer to launch here's the big they got to do a teaser roll of like no info but here's some footage or like CG stuff you, you know? just see like a Samus or something reflecting with RTX and around Dude the mass. next years will just like explode on the internet if yeah. you show them a teaser trail tra- trailer of Metroid 4 on Switch 2 I really wonder, like, with some of the technology that's going to be in here, and we don't know for sure. We 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 think it's going to maybe have some RTX cores or whatever they're called. Maybe, but even Good that boards. was that also died a little bit because there was sure. potential it was showed off. Not to cut you off, it was potential Switch Two hardware was shown off at GDC, and that they're showing off ray tracing abilities with uh, whatever RTX stuff. Right. But it seems like after that, outlets were saying that maybe that was nixed, and they were just focusing on other stuff. But okay. who knows? Sure. Um, but I'd be curious if they do get that technology and then it's there, people are pretty sure they're going to have, uh, like an M.2, some sort of really fast you have loading. to feel Jesus by now. What, uh, franchises might they bring back? Like I've heard a suggestion of wave race with that fantastic RTX water, which I don't know if I've seen. Um, uh, yeah, there's definitely games that have done that. Um, yeah. RTX water, but, um, yeah, that could be dope. Um, bring literally back. anything they could do. <laughs> They've got a lot of franchises. Maybe we get some Kid Icarus back, although that was typically, uh, what's his name, the Smash Bros. guy. Oh, okay. I forget his name. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I think that's more of like, that's always the dream scenario. It's like, we're bringing this back and that back. And then the reality is never that. Pulling a Sega. Wasn't that Sega that just announced? They just literally did that. <laughs> but yeah, that's just, you know, that's an outlier. Yeah. But with uh, Nintendo, I don't see that. But um, I do see, I would love for them to go the route that every other um, first party is doing or like a PlayStation Xbox where they're remastering stuff that isn't even old enough to be remastered but like give us uh tears of the or, uh, breath of the wild see let us see it oh, on switch too because it's gonna happen. there was rumors that they were showing off an upgraded version of that on that switch to hardware at GDC too yeah I mean I say it's gonna happen but also we didn't get a Twilight princess for no. the switch and that came out on the Wii U and I'm pretty sure that's almost the same hardware so what yeah. are we doing here guys yeah I don't understand I don't think we have a wind waker for the switch either what reality yeah. is this? Was the yeah was that Wind Waker one for uh for Wii the remake they did the remake I think it was for the Wii U Wii U okay so I don't yeah 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 I think you're right about that but to be fair that team was like testing out when they made that it was like testing out a new engine for Breath of the Wild oh, okay so I don't know now you mentioned the RTX stuff that they could potentially do um that reminds me around that time this is maybe two weeks ago three weeks ago, there was a bunch of these memes, so I didn't catch them all. Right. But they were all making fun of, people were, were complaining that whatever rumored hardware of the Switch 2 would be, they're like, oh, it's gonna be an Xbox or a PS4. It's like, that's so old. But then they're like showing screenshots of yeah. PS4 games like Ghost of Tsushima was one big one, where it's like, that's still crazy, um, awesome hardware. Where it's like, you can make stuff look amazing that's yeah. better than Switch. So it's like, why would you poo-poo that even though it's, you know, a generation behind. Or you look at, like, uh, I forget who did it. It might have been, Co- not Cordor Digital, but uh, Digital Foundry did, like, side-by-sides of Last of Us, what was it, Part 2 compared to Last of Us Part 2 Remaster or whatever oh. just came out. It's the same. It's the same picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one is tough. It's literally the same. But but uh, that's also Naughty Dog, and they are the king of this. Yes, yeah. and they always push, especially, like, when it's a game on the last bit of that generation, like Last of Us, the original, was on the tail end of the PS3, and it pushed it to the absolute max. So yeah. it had the legs to keep standing. Yep. And then, you know, Last of Us 2, I think it's three years old, four years old? Yeah, it's, so not, even, it's not even old. Yeah, so it's yeah. like they just carried over the same thing. You know, it still looks beautiful, but. Yeah, so we'll see. I, I think, yeah, massive improvement. Yeah, it sucks. It, but it was never going to be. Like, no, that's it's Nintendo. Nintendo. Nintendo has decided that their position in the household is your second console. We're, we're fine if you're not your first, but we're going to be everyone's second. Yep. And we're going to price it. Yeah, way. accordingly. They're going to focus on battery life, affordability, the actual first-party games. That's always been their strong suit, and they're going to yep. keep doing it. Yep. Um, but I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, Gavin, I pulled that up just to show you. It's been five years since any Metro yeah, Prime 4. Yeah. 
but that's plenty of time to finish it up. So yes, let's go retro. Duty. Uh, I, Gavin, we have a state of play tomorrow. Sony has their first state of play of the year where they're going to show off uh, some stuff. I um, forgot I was going to text that to you. Yeah, yes. man, I'm sure you already. I don't have my B-roll here, but um, so what was interesting was over the weekend before they announced the state of play, they announced this Monday. Okay. Now over the weekend prior, this they, this leaked where a lot of outlets were covering the fact that um, some kind of synonymous leaker had tweeted that expect one on the 31st, the state of play. Okay. And in fact, that was the day that they announced that it was going to be happening. Some of the games that they tied to that were Rise of the Ronin, which is this uh, game from Team Ninja. Is that the one with a lot of parrying? Yeah, and it's a game okay. that okay. it's already confirmed. It's just going to be they're going to cover that on the state of play. Okay, looks cool. Yes. Now, Death Stranding 2, which has also been circulating that we've had a kind of teaser trailer, which I just watched again recently Okay. from a year ago. Um, that We're going to see some footage on that. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I know nothing about. I know people are excited. Now, I, I can't remember because there are two Final Fantasy VII stuff. There's like the part two disc two essentially okay. and then there's one that's just like hey what if the story went slightly different what if tifa didn't die interesting or tifa i think is the one that lived anyway was somebody like they're changing who dies who lives like yeah. so is rebirth that one or is it the other one now you would i would not know so i would trust you okay now sonic generations remaster is an interesting one what also helps this is in the, in the past days it's been uh um, not delisted from steam but steam had a big sonic generation or sonic know. uh Sonic uh, Sale, and that was oh, the one okay. game that was not on sale for some reason. Isn't Sonic Generations like a newer one? That one was from the PS3 uh, 360 era. That's when they go and kind of remaster these classic levels, and you can swap yeah. back between like new versions and old versions of it. So it's some kind of that remaster again <laughs> is what maybe this game is going <laughs> to okay. be. Okay. All right. Now, there's sure. Silent Hill 2, which has been confirmed. Blooper Team is working on it. Um, now, we haven't seen like your actual gameplay or anything like that. There's the one of the rumors is it's going to be shown off there too. Um, a new Metro game, Metro. Now, have, have you played any of the Metros at all? A bit, and it, they're always too like semi for me, where it's like you got to duct tape everything and yeah. you're speaking Russian and everything's radiated. It's like it's just too much for me. Metro but Exodus, so fucking cool. I respect them, and they're always yeah. like pushing the the tech. I really love that. Yeah. Now, one uh, folder within this folder of uh, leaks is that this Metro game is going to be a VR game though. So maybe not that's a true. too spooky. Yeah, that'd be that'd These be games are scary. That'd be very uh, intense. Ooh, and then no. Judas rounds out this uh, state of play potentially. God, I hope Judas is good for all the shit those devs have had to put up with. I really hope the game is at least good. I want to look at footage of Judas again. This last trailer, oh, the trailer? not footage, it's but the a trailer. cool trailer because I haven't watched it since uh, was it a year ago? Was it Game Awards they showed this off? That seems right. Or this is maybe another state yeah, of play like a year did. ago. Yeah, but uh, this is from Ken Levine, who's famous for the. Uh, Bioshock franchise. He has his new studio. Uh, they've just flashed a name and I forgot. It's a ghost, ghost story. Stories? Yeah. I love that this, like, you can't, like, this is a reflection here you're looking at in the window. So you True. You can tell she, she puts her hand on it. I'm excited. I'm very curious with, like, the bad guys they have going on here. It seems like normally with the Bioshock games, at least the first two and a little bit of the second one, you're pretty isolated for the most part. You're yeah. not really around interacting with these villains but the interesting thing is like how the villains manipulate the environment and their cronies whereas here you see like standing next to that guy i assume this dog is for fast travel you're probably standing next to this gal when you're doing something so what does this kind of look like um especially with some of his like gdc talks where he talks about like narrative building blocks which i don't know how that fits into this so i'm excited I just hope it's good and that he just didn't get stupidly ambitious. Yeah, so that looked like an NPC there, too. Yeah, so, so. you're going to have, you know, it's not just going to be you. It's something like a Bioshock experience. Yeah, so very curious what, what Ken Levine does. He's he's a madman, but he has made some good games. He has. you got to give him credit. He's made some awesome games. Um, I don't expect this thing coming out until 2025. I think we get some – we get that date is what That's I think, fair. and we get some – Maybe another scissor reel like this or uh, a snippet of gameplay that's like, you know, uh, uncut, basically gameplay. But I think they'll end it with 2025. I could see no no gameplay. I could see just scissor reel because this yeah. game doesn't actually exist. Um, Possibly. But... <laughs> it looks really, really cool. I hope it's good. I really and you get the good. like the vibes from Bi Bioshock in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just and of course you have like the hand, you know, powers just like a Bioshock game. Uh, it looks very nuts. 
So hope I really hope that rumor's true. And that's tomorrow? That's tomorrow. At what time? At two PM. Come on, I can't do it on my lunch hour. I know. <laughs> it's called but, sick. Uh, <laughs> two PM tomorrow. So we'll see in fact what actually is part of that. But that's um it's I, that gives me more it makes me think it's more credible the fact that they predicted the actual date that the stream was gonna happen before Sony and these games tied to it. So we will see. It is interesting how we have these like consistent leakers. Like we have one for Nintendo where this guy is like, he'll give a little hints for the, mm. the direct every time and they're they're always correct. So if we, we get these consistent also sometimes I wonder too, like, are, is this just straight up Nintendo employees? They're like, all right, just tease Right. Yeah, it's true. RPG. It's like uh, advertising or yeah. promotion within the promotions, like all these yeah. levels to it. But uh, I really hope Judas is here. Yes, me too. Gavin Wind on this. Uh, I don't know if you caught this. No. Uh, Doom. What but are we running on today. Uh, Doom running inside your tummy. So this is uh, Lauren. This oh, is, I forgot about this. It's been circulating online. Some little yeah. uh, info on this beforehand. Lauren Ramland, a PhD student at, at MIT, created her final project on her synthetic biology course in which she showed how the game Doom could be displayed using gut bacteria. So long story short, they're using... Uh, they're adding biofluorescent proteins to bacteria, gut bacteria, under some right. kind of crazy microscope, and they can control the bacteria and create pixels with them. Right. Um, the catch is it takes 70 minutes for this screen to refresh. Right. So you could just have flashes, but they're showing the potential yeah. that of what you can do. And she clarifies, too. She's like, to be fair, it's not actually running on bacteria. It's just displaying on Yeah, bacteria, yeah. So it's not like in your tummy, but it's very still... Very different, but yeah. It's still a great flex for, like the doom meme of how things can run on doom or what can run doom. That's right. It's black and white. Yeah. I'm so it's black and white was the highest resolution. And we're seeing them kind of like quantify. Okay. Like how am I going to represent this screenshot as bacteria? And so it's a lot of jargon, but then basically turns into these very, <laughs> they're pretty rough images, but they're, you know, if you could see it in real time, like if it was actual frames, it's like, it would look like something. Yeah. 4,000 times speed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like 70 minutes before it refreshes. So it's so it starts out as black and white and then maybe gets some grays in there. I think it's just <laughs> I think it's just that. There isn't a lot because the entire uh okay. YouTube video, which is from her account, um, shows like just like the um process of thinking about it, of planning it out, and then seeing okay. you know, if it's possible and then going through and then the end result of what can be done. She was using looks like E. coli to do that, which I some chicken. Yeah, well, uh, my girlfriend was talking about it because we use, I guess, E. coli for everything because, like, they're ridiculously studied and we can, I think, modify them. So, like, a lot of medicines, like, they modify the E. coli to just poop out medicine. Whoa. So. Which, in here, on its own, E. coli is bad for you, right? Yes. But you, it's the best, like, blank point to then just make something else out of it? I guess. That's wild. So very, very dangerous, but also very, I mean, I assume they would be, if you were eating those E. coli, I assume still bad for you. Yeah. But. Or new diet trend that could happen. But eat their poop. <laughs> that makes me, that at least makes some of the things I hear more credible when you hear of these like crazy facilities that are legit, that store very dangerous like oh, sure. diseases and whatnot. Yeah. And I always think like, why the hell would you do that? But they're researching it. They're figuring out ways, like you mentioned. Yeah on a higher level of that, where it's like, we can take this crazy dangerous thing, but we can maybe tweak it yeah. to not end the world, but then it ends up doing that <laughs> inevitably. But right. it's, I can see the merit behind it. Yeah. It's just, that it always, you know, ends up fucking shit up, but yeah, we'll keep trying. Well, AI will get there first and fuck it all up. <laughs> yeah. so. Yes. Interesting. Gavin, we'll end it there for the week. Um, you can find us on Plastic Heart Pod on Twitter. Uh, Gavin, if you'll tell the... Uh, it's called X now. Um, I will actually. never, ever yeah, fucking call it. So dumb. HBO is HBO and Twitter's Twitter. Oh, I forget about that. I'll yeah. die on this hill. Gavin, <laughs> if you tell the beautiful people out there, good night. All right. Good night, beautiful people.